Welcome back to the Gentle Counselor podcast. My name is Crystal and I support mums through their inner healing and parenting journeys. For those of you listening right now, this episode is a little bit different because back in October of 2021, it was World Mental Health Day and I had some wonderful friends join me over three days to talk all about mental health and motherhood at the Aussie Moms Mental Health Virtual Event. I hope you enjoyed these conversations, which were recorded live at the summit. I'm also thrilled to let you know that we will be returning in 2022 and plan on making it even bigger and better. It may or may not involve a retreat. (laughs) Wherever you are right now, I hope these episodes find you when you truly need it. I would love to hear your feedback on these chats, so make sure you're connected with me on social media at The Gentle Counselor. If you'd like to receive an email once a month that is full of freebies, parenting tips, links to podcast episodes, beautiful affirmation screensavers, and other goodies, make sure you are signed up to my email list. I hope you enjoy this chat. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to day three of the Aussie Moms Mental Health Virtual Event. Thank you so much to everyone who is able to join us live. And if you're here with us, say hello in the comments so that we know who's here and that we're able to chat with you. If you have any questions along the way, please do put them in the comments because we'll be able to answer them now. Um, But if you are watching this as a replay, still pretend like you're here live with us and say hello, because if you do want to ask any questions, we will make sure to come back to answer those um, or to just have a chat with you if that's what you want to have as well. So today I'm joined with Chrissy from Her Nourished, and we're going to be talking all about creating a healthy relationship with food. So welcome, Chrissy. Thank you so much for having me and a big, massive shout out to you and your team for the work you've put in for this as well. Um, Epic. Absolutely epic. Oh, thank you so much. It It's honestly, uh, I'm so happy with how it, much has come together, but I definitely could not have done it on my own. So I'm very grateful for Sarah, who's been helping out a lot. I gave her a bit of a shout out at the end of her chat yesterday. So everyone needs to go and flood Sarah with love because she has been crucial to all of this coming together. So Chrissy, do you want to start off by telling us a bit about yourself and what you do and why you do it? Oh, sure. Um, So my name's Chrissy, and I do think it's important, particularly at the moment, just to know um, where you get your information from as well. So I have a Bachelor of Psychology um, or Bachelor of Science in Psychology. Um, I'm also a uni qualified nutritionist um, and a certified health coach. But maybe most relevant to this is that I'm also a mum to three. So I really think that my my goal and my whole purpose is to take that evidence-based research particularly in the topic of um, feeding kids and so my area of specialty or expertise is in um, children one to eight and meal times and how challenging that can be as a parent um, and I guess my goal is to take you know best practice and what the what the research and the evidence is saying and how can we make that realistic for families yes. because we know there's a little bit of a bridge that needs to be made and um yeah things don't always go perfectly to plan especially at meal time so yeah, yeah that's my thing um so yeah I own her nourished kids and yeah that's that's what I love and what I do yeah and I love all the information you share because not only is it uh, relatable and relevant to moms with kids especially those who are struggling with kids that tend to be a bit more picky or challenging at mealtime but you're qualified as well so you actually know what you're talking <laughs> about which is wonderful but with your um, varying skills as well that really is able to inform your practice to also be realistic and that's something that I particularly appreciate as well um, and you've had your own experience with it whether it's yourself or with your kids mm-hmm. so you know that you're getting good information from Chrissy here, which is amazing. Oh, thank you. So, I'm right there in the trenches with you for sure. Yeah, I know. I know. It's a lot. If ever I get questions about it, I'm like, I you know, go to Chrissy. This is her page. She will help you out. <laughs> <laughs> I love that um, doing things like this means that I have like my resource of everyone that I can use yeah. like to help and collaborate, which is great. So let's start off by talking a bit about why is the topic of supporting a healthy relationship with food so important to you? 
Yeah, for sure. And look, let's start up straight um, up front as that's a really big and heavy topic. Yeah. Um, and I think the reason why I feel so comfortable talking about it now is because I know how valuable the conversation is about mm. it. Um, and also how alone I felt when I was going through um, some more personal struggles, which I'll share as to, because it frames the story. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, ironically, I was studying psychology whilst also struggling with an eating disorder. Um, I know how ironic it sounds I remember sitting in a class on mental health first aid and eating disorders and thinking wow like this is really ironic Mm. um it wasn't a problem until it was a major problem for me and it really impacted so many areas of my life um I definitely felt alone felt isolated I felt um you know my relationships and my health were impacted and it really came to a point where back in I think it was around 2009 um I made a really scary decision but perhaps the most important decision I've made in my life and that was telling someone Mm -hmm. um I told my now husband so um I yeah I made that scary step of like saying I'm really struggling and this is what's going on Mm -hmm. and it was really the best decision I've ever made. And it's been the catalyst for so much of what I do now, because without that experience, um, I don't think I would value what I do as much now. So um, yeah, that's back in, back in 2009. And that's like a little snippet of the story. Um, And I've really made a commitment to change my relationship with food. And that's been a huge journey ever since. I mean, that was what, 13 years ago now. Mm, So um, a lot happens in 13 years. Um, I think becoming a mum was really, um, I guess I had a few slap on the face moments. Um, So I think, number one, I felt like I was bombarded with messages. You know, I've done so much work on, you know, healing my relationship with food and I'd done so much work on creating a healthy body image. And then I was slapped in the face with body after baby. Um, You know, those messages that whether we realize it or not, they come up. it sometimes it's not even sometimes you don't even realize you're seeing them Mm. um and that was a huge huge moment for me where I was like wow like this is a lot more oh what would I say like it's a lot more prevalent than I even realized it was and I also saw how um I really wasn't alone in this like how many other Mm. people really felt or maybe had a history like I had and then after having a baby how how much that brings up some of the emotions and the feelings again as well. Um, To be really honest with you, after I had my first son, I bought a bounce back plan from a really well-known like bodybuilder influencer. And the minute that landed in my inbox, I was like, what have I done? Like, what am I doing? No, no, like get rid of this. Um, And I think I just share that because no matter how much work you do it doesn't mean that you're not susceptible to all these marketing messages Mm. because it's not our fault that we are um you know we are bombarded with all of these messages all of the time and it's really hard to turn your blinkers onto them um it doesn't matter how strong you are or how much work you've done um yeah these messages are out there and it's it's hard Mm. um so yeah I think the second realization for me and particularly why this topic's so important to me as a mum is that it's something as simple as one day I was putting on my makeup um, I used to work in a office or like I don't know if you call it an office but I worked with families um, and I had my first son and I was just putting on my makeup in the morning and my son who was one at the time like literally started mimicking exactly what I was doing and it really made me realize like wow my actions really Mm. matter um yeah so I think for me that's really you know there's been those little moments and those little tugs where I've gone the work that I do on my relationship with myself with food and my body um it really matters it matters for my kids and it matters for for other people's kids and in the community like all that work it really does matter yeah yeah and I think having kids does that to us in a lot of different ways in a lot of different areas of life where it really highlights things that are important or those moments where we realize oh my goodness you are going to do exactly what I'm doing and for me and you as well like we have daughters too and so we're like (laughs) even more aware like okay um I think for me it was just like getting to that moment it was like a couple of years ago and I was like 
I've literally spent more than half my life, like, you know, since we're like 12, 13, like this is how young, Mm. even younger it happens, like hating my body. I have had enough. Like how ridiculous is that to have wasted so much time, so much energy. And then also when you look back a lot of times, like for me as well, it's been because of me being in a bigger body, right? But when I was that young age, there was nothing wrong. Yeah. I was just so bombarded yeah. with it with like magazines and comparing myself to other girls, like yeah. the things that we do when we're going through that adolescence period. And then when you become a mom, then you get the whole bounce back thing. Then it's like, you have to be yeah. a fit mummy and a, and a MILF. And, you know, like there's this expectation yeah. that you need to like look amazing and like not to mm-hmm. let the kids get in the way of that kind of thing. Um, such yeah. a toxic yeah. message. And for me as well, I've been exploring a lot of that, um, more so in the case of thinking, okay, what is actually going on for me? Like, how is this emotional attachment happening? Because it's if anyone who is also struggling with their weight um, and can relate to what I'm saying understands that it's not as simple as counting calories or just not eating or just yeah. getting up and going exercise. Mm-hmm. Like, that's a very privileged yeah. place to come from. That's a whole other conversation yeah. um, that I don't want to get into yeah. today um, because, yeah, I'll just rant and rave on that for ages. But essentially, yeah. like for me, it's been unlearning diet culture first. So for me, it took a really Mm -hmm. long time to realize, like, I felt guilty for eating anything, even if it was a salad. And I remember telling my psychologist that and she was like, wow. And I'm like, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So it's far more complicated. Yeah. Even my recovery. And I remember sitting down with a psychologist and she was like, so it's just the foods, like, you know, like the pastas. And I was like, no, no, it's all foods. Yeah. It's not just the pastas. Um, It's so much more complex that I think even... Um, yeah, even some people realize so because yeah, we've been fed that, how so many things are bad, right? Like it was fat, it's yeah. sugar, it's carbs, it's like potatoes, like organic, vegetables. You know, yeah, it's yeah. like so frustrating. So for me, it's been unlearning because I then saw everything is bad for me. Yeah. So then it's like allowing yeah. myself to have things again, and then also um to not get to the point of like starving yourself where you're so hungry that of course, then you want to eat everything. And so that's where like the binge eating side of it comes from. And I used to think it was like emotional eating. And then I realized like, no, I've just like hungry. And then your brain is like, how are you going to get the most calories to yourself faster? And then your brain knows that like, you know, the sweets and the chocolates or McDonald's or whatever it is, is going to do it fastest. And then we have them like around every single corner where we live. Um, So when I'm able to look at it from a a lens and take out that moral aspect of it, like as Mm -hmm. if like taking out that language of it being bad or meaning that you're a bad person or something, you can see it so much more clearly, but it's still unlearning all of that that has been drilled in us. It's been drilled in us for so long. Like as if we're going to just magically be like, yep, I'm feeling bad today. Yeah. Like it's it's a process. Yeah. Like you said, and like, like it's, it's what, like, what yeah. 13 years, I think 13 you said. Years, yeah, I think now. Yeah. And I still, I still feel like constantly I'm having to check myself and I'm having mm. to put myself in check. And I think um I don't know if anyone else relates to this, but even just filters on Instagram or yes. um, good angles. And I'm like, wow, like. I constantly have to put myself in check, even though I know all this stuff and even though I've done all this work, um, it's that reminder like, whoa, no, this is a filter. Um, Personally, something I do is just like that, that, um, try try this filter on. If I see something and I'm like, wow, like they look incredible. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I even said the other day, like right now I'm sitting in front of the best light in my house with like this beautiful chair curtain, (laughs) like nice, beautiful lighting, like just to be really transparent. Um, because it can really impact you mm. and go, well, why do I not look like that? Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's such a huge topic. And I, I just think it's really important for people to know that um, it's a constant journey and it's, you're, you're doing all this really hard and really challenging and confronting work alongside at the same time being bombarded yes. with all these messages. So yes. And um, then parenting and then all the challenges that come with that <laughs> yeah. or just life in general. <laughs> it's a lot for sure for sure and I just don't think we can expect like the smooth sailing Mm. journey because um yeah it's such a big topic and it's one that it's tricky to navigate for sure yeah that's a good point you just made as well like when you make the decision or the realization that something needs to change it's not going to be like oh that's a smooth like that's it and then I'm going to get to my end it's like no you're going to have like ups and downs 
along that realization. And it's really tricky. It takes a lot of um, patience. It takes a lot of compassion for yourself as well. You have to be very kind to yourself. And I also think, like you said, it's important to have someone around you that is going to allow you to be vulnerable and honest with no judgment and can be supportive um, and also not to kind of push you into doing what you're not ready for yet, but just to be like, okay, I'm here. Mm -hmm. Like, let me know what you need. I'm going to be holding your hand along this, however long it takes. Yeah. Absolutely. That sounding board is so important. Yeah. 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 So how can we improve our relationship with food? Yeah. And I want this to be one where you, it's such a big topic and there's so much you can share. I can sit here and talk about it for weeks, um, but I wanted to give you something to take away. So um, the first one just feeds in from what you were just saying, and it's just a judgment free zone. Mm -hmm. Um, that judgment of how we eat or how other people's eat, it just doesn't serve anyone. And I know how easy it can be to fall into it because it helps put us into perspective. You know, it might be, um, well, the uh, lunch boxes are a perfect example of this and going, you know, well, is that lunch box as healthy as what I do or is it less mm. healthy and trying to put yourself in a category of, well, where do I fit in? Am I in the healthy camp? Am I not? But if you can start to try and drop that judgment and just go, you know what, I don't know their story. I, I know my story and I know why I'm eating the foods that I am or buying the foods that I am Um, and just drop the judgment. It's such a good place to start. It's not an easy place to start, but it's such an important one Um, because there's so many reasons, like you said earlier, that people choose foods and access budget. These are two huge ones that I think get really overlooked. Um, You know, eating all organic, all whole food is such a privileged place to come from. Mm. And I don't think a lot of us realize that. Um, I think it's just really important to know that you are doing your best and whatever your best right now is, it's okay. Um, Yeah, compassion is key for sure. So that would definitely be my like overarching top, 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 top thing. Um, The next one would be being mindful of consumption and I don't mean food here I mean what you see so images on social media um the the types of content that you follow are you following fitness based information um are you you know what kind of things are you watching like just just checking in on yourself and it doesn't mean you can't um you know follow who who makes you feel best but I think just keeping yourself in check and I have to do this personally myself as well like um you know the type of information that I'm following and you know is is this resonating with this with me sorry how does it make me feel how Mm. and sometimes how you respond isn't actually anything to do with them it's just a reflection of where you are and what's going on for you that day you know has today been a really crappy day and this was just the last thing I needed to Mm. see today um I highly, highly recommend that, um, you know, if you do like social media to pop some non-diet accounts on your feed. So um, if anyone wants Mm. some that I love following, let me know, Um, but, you know, non-diet dietitians or, um, you know, a healthier every size account. Um, There's so many amazing accounts out there. there It's just nice sometimes, Um, you know, when you're scrolling and you just have this pop up in your feed and you're like, oh, like that's the reminder I needed today. Yeah. Yeah. I've noticed Um, a big difference in that shift as well. Like being more mindful of who I'm following and I've had to unfollow a few accounts because I realized like, oh, I like, I love following them because they're them or whatever it is, but actually how I'm feeling right now is more important than me following them because I'm, it's triggering that in me. It's really making me feel like, I should look like them or the comparison, especially like when it's um, yeah. influencers or whatever who have had like a baby and then they like look like they never had a baby essentially. And so you're like, yeah. oh, that's really hard. But also because um, I'm mindful of the audience we'll have too is for me coming from someone in a larger body, I also find it triggering um, following accounts where they are thin, but they're joining the body positive movement to show like, the roles that they have but then as someone in a bigger body Mm -hmm. it kind of makes you go that's nothing compared to like what I have yeah so I want to acknowledge that for people watching that sometimes you have to be even again more particular about the counts you're following and and I'll try to remember later on actually to share some of the ones that I really like um and I'm sure that you shared one that I started following recently as well Chrissy um that's great so Corey 
Yeah, um, I'll I'll put, I'll share her account right now. And so there's some books following. as well that you can read. So I'll try to remember to post something in my yes, story I've got if them anyone's here wanting that. Well. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because that's something yeah. I, I, I mean, look, kind of I'm, just started looking into it myself more seriously. It, it was like on my list yeah. of like the traumas to get through. <laughs> you know, it's always a journey with everything yeah. you go through. I'm like, okay, it's yeah. time to like look at this and really think about what's happening. Yeah. yeah. And I'm so mindful of it. I mean, look, even today I shared a post specifically on what you just mentioned. Um, and I've shared before that I'm so mindful that I am in a smaller body mm. and I'm so mindful about how I share this topic because my experience is so different um I think the one thing that always it, it brings it back for me is that a huge thing for me was losing weight would cure that negative yes. body image but yes. I I lived that experience yes. and I know it didn't and um, I just remembered that you did post that and I actually wasn't talking about you so I hope it didn't come across that way but I like <laughs> that you bring this up because I have been yeah. in a smaller body yeah. Like that's what I mean as well is that we are all unhappy at any yeah. size, which yeah. is disgusting and upsetting in itself, like yeah. that we feel yeah. horrible no matter what anyway. Um, yeah. And so I think for me, it was good to realize like, oh, or to remember like, yeah, even people that I'm like, man, I wish I had your body still mm. have like their own insecurities or um, the societal pressures are like different it's like the same but also different a little bit you know so I think it's like you said at the beginning like the huge disclaimer for this whole chat is like it's complicated (laughs) we're not going to get into all of it but I really like that we're able to show both of our sides of it as well to sure kind of try to make a well-rounded discussion here today I hope that's coming across absolutely an inclusive discussion I yes inclusive is a very good word word to use my brain's still waking up um I've got a few people in the comments so Jackie's just said I love the gentleness that you bring to this topic Chrissy so often I feel bombarded in this area but your take of it being a journey that takes time is 100% um and then Sarah's said I find the rules about food so interesting too. That's my next topic. Yeah. yeah. I'm ex-anorexic that, so that the and next bulimic. Thing I was about to talk about. Yeah. yeah, it's hard. Breakfast is hard. Smoothies don't always make me feel good. Leftovers yeah. work well for me, but the yeah. rules about it not being breakfast food is yeah. interesting to wrestle with. Yeah, I can relate to that actually. Yeah. And then she yeah. suggested there's an account called Make Love Not Diets for some body love. Body love. So thanks for that recommendation. Oh, thank I'll you. I'll check that one out as well. The rules. Um, yeah, the food yes. rules is huge. <laughs> yeah. um, and it's not just about the food specifically, but the restrictions, the timing, yes. just like yes. you said about, um, you know, breakfast foods. It's so complex and we don't realize how much of an impact they have mm. until we reflect on them. Um, personally, this one for me has had the most significant and positive impact on my life. Um, because with the exception of things like allergies, I mean, if we have allergies, if we have food intolerances or there's food we don't like, or it's expired or off, then, you know, maybe we don't want to have these foods. Um, but all foods can be enjoyed as a, as part of a healthy diet. Mm -hmm. And I think that is so important to know. And, um, you know, look, I'll be really honest as someone who, I think I just, I fell into the health space and then Mm -hmm. I was seen and I think I still am seen as like someone who eats a healthy lifestyle and that's absolutely the case in terms of like I value um I don't know choosing things that make me feel good but at the same time I think falling into that category without me really realizing put me in a position where I was really scared um Mm. to share some of the honest truths Mm. um and I think that's something that I'm getting it's, it's not perfect. Like I'm still working on that in terms mm. of getting better with people judging, you know, I'm very aware that because of where I've accidentally fallen into that people judge if I share, um, you know, like I shared a soy ice cream the other day and then I get, Oh, like, are you having soy? Like, why are you having soy? Why are you having oh, sugar? Yes. Um, and I yes. think I'm just so aware that for me, mm. I'm like, yeah, that's part of my healthy lifestyle because if I don't have these foods, I, all I can think about is these foods. Mm. Um, you know, if I put those rules in, then all I can think about is the rules that yeah. I put in. If you restrict, just like, it just makes say, it so much don't worse. Eat sugar. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. I think we've all experienced it because it's part of the diet, dieting culture is, um, you know, if you say don't eat chocolate, all you can think about is chocolate. Yes. Um, it's very different. And I think that um, 
you know, I mean, one, we know from the decades of research on dieting that dieting is just not effective. Um, but two, I think it's really important to know that when we talk about intuitive eating, mm. we not, I think a lot of people get, um, I don't know, like confused or they think intuitive eating means eating whatever you want and just all junk food. Like you're just going to eat all the chocolate and all the lollies and all the cake, but it's not the case. I think intuitive eating and its true essence is eating foods that make you feel good. And Mm. I think intuitively we know what foods we should be eating. Um, It's not about that. It's just about eating what makes you feel best in the moment. And Mm. that can change, you know, you can be going through. And I think even just the topic of emotional eating is another really big one because we don't want emotionless eating. We don't want to be emotionless mm. when we eat. We want to have some emotions. There's so many beautiful things about eating, you know, enjoying a meal with family, um, you know, having sitting around and I think of a situation I was in yesterday, like sitting around and watching your kids play in the pool and, um, you know, sharing food with friends. There's so mm. many emotions that come around yeah, eating. Yeah, that's a great point. So, yeah, like I just think we can't say, you know, we need to be emotionless when we eat and have, mm. we shouldn't be emotionally eating because, you um, eating intuitively is really just thinking about what do I need right now what's best for me in this moment what's going to make me feel best in this moment yeah yeah. um acknowledging it and then moving on um it's so much easier said than done though I know it's not yes because (laughs) or if you're someone that's also struggling like how Chrissy and I are sharing with our personal experience it's also in addition to that going okay what am I being resistant to why what is coming up for me right now what am I scared of what am I uncomfortable with um what am I really wanting versus what I feel like I'm supposed to have or be doing so it's like a lot of things to kind of weigh up and consider but I think I think it gets easier the more you do it in the sense that like the first couple of times is really hard to be aware of it but the more you have these conversations and um follow those accounts or read the books that are surrounding this because they're going to make you Mm -hmm. think as well. This chat is going to make you think as well. And so I think that's a really good starting point. Um, Mm -hmm. And then of course, if you want to um, go see someone as a professional, uh, again, make sure sure they make sure they're more specifically trained in um, whatever topic it is that you're needing, whether it's anorexia, um, binge eating, bulimia, whatever it is, because um, trauma informed, uh, professionals is really important in this because you yeah. if some if you go to someone and they hand you like a 1200 calorie um an exercise yeah. plan like that's not going to actually help you no yeah it's really not and sometimes it's really hard because people want you know people come to you and they they want like I want to lose weight mm-hmm. because that's been fed to me but maybe it's I actually just want to feel feel better yeah. I want to feel better in my body or I want to feel better um you know it's just unpacking that and going I know I hear what you want what you think you want this is what I think you need Mm. um yeah it's it's a hard one um a book that I love on this topic and this is one I you probably heard me recommend it like a hundred times because I I really do think it's probably one of the most um easy to understand easy to unpack book that I've read on the topic and it's called Eating Mindfully by Susan Albers um it's a brilliant brilliant book and it's just got so many little like effective tools that you can put into practice in terms of how how you unlearn some of like you said like unlearning some of the things that you've learned over time and then relearning new ways to eat um she's got a great one with pistachios as an example of you know when you it's not about um eat pistachios but you know if you've got some time just to sit down with some like a handful of pistachios um in the shell because the process of having to Mm. take them off just makes you more mindful about when you're eating them if you've got no no other distractions around um sometimes just that physical tool of needing Mm. to do something that takes that little bit more time can make you pause in the moment um something that I personally have found really effective in um both in recovery but um you know if I ever have felt like that that feeling of guilt that comes up sometimes when Mm. we choose something we eat something and then we're like I don't know it's surrounded in diet culture I think we all we all have those feelings sometimes um I know how quickly it can spiral from I you know I made this choice now I feel guilty now I'm just going to sabotage I'm going to self-sabotage um and then you lose control and it just, and then you go, I'll start on Monday or I'll yeah. start yeah. first of 
whatever. Um, something that's been really, really helpful and effective for me is like a one hour reset. So basically what I do is I would just set a timer on my phone at the start because I needed the, the visual timer. I needed like a visual prompt. And I would just go, you know what, I'm going to sit with this feeling for an hour um, and then I'm going to let my timer go off and it's a new day. It's a new, it's a fresh start. Um, I'm not going to let this impact now my next meal. Mm. Um, I'm not going to impact the way that I carry on the day um, because sometimes I think you could go, I feel guilty. So then I'm not going to eat my next meal or I'm going to choose yes. different foods and then yeah. it, it just turns into this big spiral. So for me, just that one hour reset just helped me process that it's okay to feel things about food. You know, if you eat things and you you feel that guilt come up, um, to sit with it and be okay with mm. it coming up. Yeah. Um, and then just giving yourself a little bit of compassion, removing the judgment, like we said at the start, um, and then just carrying on with your day. And it's mm. like I said, it's so much easier said than done. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that that the timer and I think the visual element of it um, has been something that in recovery particularly I found really, really beneficial as well. Yeah, that's a really good tip. Thanks for sharing that. And yeah. for anyone that's also um, going to try this or if, or if you feel like you find it really hard to be kind and compassionate to yourself, um, sometimes it's helpful to think of it more as how you would talk to your friend. And so you wouldn't say those things to your friend. You know, like if you had your friends sitting there next to you or a loved one or your child, you're not going to say all those horrible things and guilt them, right? You're going to be like, you you tried or, you know, um, give yourself this hour and relax. Like take some deep breaths. It's okay. Like just because you ate that or didn't eat that doesn't make you a bad person, whatever you feel like you need to say Um, or journal it out or something like that. Sometimes you need to make it feel like almost like a third person before the, then you can start finally doing it to yourself. And that's okay too. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's a really mm-hmm. important element to kind of go at your own pace as well. It's going to yeah. look so different for everyone. And again, like we said, it's complicated because the, yeah. the trauma behind it can be very different. The, the disorder itself is different because there's, there's so many different ways. Yeah. It can even be a combination. It could have changed from, Absolutely. you know, when you were younger to now as well. So um, it's something that needs a lot of patience as well. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes it's something as simple as finding something like a positive affirmation to repeat to yourself that has nothing to do with your body. So, um, you know, some that I personally used at the start was things like, I'm, I really like my smile. I'm really proud of how I responded right now. Um, and just taking it away completely from your body um, and, and food in general. Um, and just finding those little things about yourself that you love and just repeating them daily, um, you know, reminding yourself daily because the more you practice that, the more, you know, it gets easier with time. And um, it's something that just, I don't know, you start to feel like it's, you start to believe it over time. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, so that's another thing that I think I've found really helpful as well is just finding those little affirmations or one that I really, really love and that mm-hmm. I come back to as my body knows what to do with this food. Um, oh, and it's something so simple because it's so relevant for so many different things. You know, my body knows what to do with this food. Mm. Um, yeah, sometimes that's one just to repeat in your head. And I say it to my kids as well, like your body knows what to do with this food. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's that's one that I really like as well. Yeah, that's great. So speaking of kids, just to tie it, because Chrissy and I, before we started our chat, we're kind of talking about how this links, like this whole topic of a healthy relationship with food not only relates to us as adults, but you know, we, we, especially if you're struggling with it now, you probably don't want your kids to go through what you've gone through as well. So do you have any tips or advice around how um, people struggling now or just parents in general to be aware to essentially not influence or put onto some pressure or something onto their children with eating that could potentially lead into some of these like eating disorders and things in the future? Yeah. I want to first and foremost say that it's not your fault and it's not your parents' fault. Um, I know that, I mean, in, you know, in your role that there's so much unpacking to do around this, but, um, you know, you can think of situations like I have a sister and I'm, I, I was the one that struggled with an eating disorder and our, our experiences, you know, we had very similar experiences. Um, and I just want you to know as a parent um, that, we can do all we possibly can and our children can still be exposed to things external to us um so I just think that's really important because most of it is external yeah most of it is that external pressure anyway yeah yeah and yeah I think it's just being important to 
be compassionate and just to know that what you do mm. is just you can do your best in the moment and that's going to look different for everyone and mm. every moment as well. Um, I definitely think that the reason why I focus this topic more on us than kids is because it's so important they they integrate and relate so mm. intricately um I don't think you can talk about children's positive body image without talking about a, a family or it doesn't matter whether you're a parent or not if you have any contact with a child in a significant way like if you are a teacher like anything um I think this is such an important conversation to have because like I said, I think um, we don't realize how much of an impact social modeling has. And I talk about this all the time, um, just in terms of picky eating or fussy eating, how important the family meal is because they watch what we do and they yeah. see it and they see safety. Um, the same goes for body image and it's really, really hard. And I think it's just something that you constantly, it's just a reflection journey the whole time. So picking up on yourself a few, and it's not saying that you're doing something bad in the moment if it ever happens, because it happens to all of us, but catching yourself, I think is key. So if yeah. you are walking past a mirror and checking your appearance, um, weighing yourself in front of your children, saying, passing comments about your body, um, saying things about food, which is really, really hard. Um, so it might be, I can't eat that. I think one big one that comes up is I can't eat that because it's not on my diet or um, mm. I can't eat that right now. But just thinking about, well, how can I have this conversation with my kids in a way that, you know, it can look a little bit different. You know, can I say this to my kids in a way that um, supports them and lets them know that it's okay if they eat that food? Mm. Um, it's a big topic, but sometimes it's just having those scripts or that language about what can I say in this moment? I think um, some people come to me and they ask, what, what can I say? Because I'm going through a period where, like, where I need to trial dairy-free or I need to trial or I'm having some intolerance issues or whatever it might be. How can I have that conversation with my kids so that they don't feel like this food is bad? Yeah. Um, and it can be simply just having that conversation and just being like, you know, when I have that food, sometimes it makes me feel a bit yucky. So I'm just seeing what I feel like when I don't have that food. Mm. Um you know, rather than saying that food's bad or that food's, um, you know what I mean? Like it's yeah, just putting that negative connotation about, on it, like labeling yeah, it as yeah, bad just, or junk or something like yeah. that. Yeah. 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 Rather relating it to how you feel. And I think mm. the more we can do this, the more we can encourage our kids to relate food to how they feel as well. And um, it's a huge topic for kids as well. And I just think, yeah, I think the keys in this area when we are talking to kids about food is just making sure we don't put that moral um, value on food. So not saying if food is good or bad, um, being really mindful about how we talk about foods that we really struggle with personally. Mm. So maybe it's sugar, maybe it's, um, I don't know, whatever it might be. Um, just being really aware of the conversations we're having about it. Mm. It's one that I'm constantly reflecting on. Am I saying no? Because, which I don't, Personally, I don't feel like I say no often, um, but I've had a conversation, you know, a, a moment come up really recently as my kids are getting older, I'm finding these new challenges come up. And one recently was a Coke, um, you know, my son wanted to have Coke, oh, his yeah. friends were having Coke. And I was like, for me, it's not about, you know, most of the time if we are out, I don't say no. And I'm really mindful of that because they need to experience it. And I think the imperfect moments are perfect for learning opportunities. Mm. Um, but I was like, oh, like the caffeine. I don't know how I feel about the mm. caffeine in this. Um, and I ended up having a conversation with him afterwards because I was the worst mum for saying no when his oh. friends were having it. <laughs> it was at bedtime as well. Um, and I really had to reflect, am I like, why am I saying no? What what's the what's my feelings behind mm. this? And I was like, no, you know what? I really do think that this is a really important topic that we have a conversation about. So we sat down and I said, I wasn't saying no because I don't want you to have it and I don't want you to I don't want you to feel like you're missing out it's that when we have caffeine particularly at night it can make us you know it can impact our sleep and then we can really struggle to sleep and then we feel really tired the next day um do you understand and can we keep having this conversation and keep talking about you know when the might the, the right time might be to explore this again mm. Um, so it's never going to look perfect and we all have situations where we're like whoa like I wasn't expecting that yeah. like, this and one day you won't be there to say no as well 
So yeah, it's like while sure. they're younger, take advantage of being able to educate them for whatever the reason is, yeah. like caffeine. It's like, it's not even about the sugar. It's not yeah. about whatever. It's like that no. specifically. And it's like, you know, yeah. it's like probably one day you're going to do it. Like you, we can't, yeah, we can't sure. I know you know, control yeah. that, which is yeah. part of letting go as parents. But I think yeah. rather than just saying no without anything to follow it up, that's not helping. Yeah. Because they're just going to no, interpret that whatever no. way they're going to interpret it. Like, oh, you're yeah, a bad mom. Did or, know, or, so I'm not allowed that. Or, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was the worst in the moment. And that's really and good that you brought up after. Like, if you can't bring it up in the moment because you don't want to embarrass them or go on a thing or whatever it might be, you can yeah. say it after and be like, hey, I want to talk about what happened earlier. And that's totally yeah. fine as well. And I, yeah. And I think this is such an important one is just any of those imperfect moments really are perfect opportunities to learn. You know, your kids go to a party and they go crazy at the table and, stuff like 10 marshmallows in their mouth at the same time and you go whoa <laughs> like what just happened yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. sometimes that's not the moment to talk about but mm. you know in the car ride on the way home or the next day or that evening is just mm. a time to start having those conversations about mm. um first of all reflecting on how that made you feel and yeah. then reflecting on like how can I have that conversation so that we make this a learning experience rather yeah. than one where um it's like you did the wrong thing um how can we make this a learning experience yeah Yeah, with the whole lolly thing and like parties and stuff and so please feel free to correct me if you think there's any issue in it but what I talk to my kids about is listen to your belly that's my that's my like quick phrase I say to them when we're at parties or whatever it might be and I've noticed I've had it a bit much and I'll say listen to your belly and so far that seems to have worked really well for my kids like they seem pretty good regulating themselves Mm. and then Mm. if they have done too much and I've let them because I want them to learn what that feels like that's my idea behind it as well is let them learn the hard way (laughs) um then I use that like oh is your belly feeling a bit sick and they're like yeah my god do you think maybe you had a bit too many of the chocolates today and they're like Mm -hmm. yeah I'm like they're really yummy aren't they it's hard to stop and we're like yeah we just talk about I want to eat chocolate too I just talk about it honestly and so then in future I can use that like remember last time at Charlie's party um just remember to listen to your belly and they're like oh yeah I felt really yeah. sick last time and so it's like an honest conversation that's yeah. how my approach yeah. is and acknowledging like yeah I, I want ice cream too <laughs> like yeah but we don't have I any in the freezer at the moment I'm sorry <laughs> yeah that's yeah. such an important one and yeah I think allowing kids to experience when they get to the age where they're going to like parties or they have those mm. opportunities I think um allowing them bearing in mind safety because obviously if you've got a child and it's hard candy then maybe you want to put some boundaries I think safety first followed by allowing them that's a really good point to bring up the safety aspect yeah yeah Yeah, because I think it's it's easy for us to go we'll just let them let them do what they want Mm. um for their relationship with food but we do have to still think sometimes about safety are they putting too much in their mouth at Mm. once um you know, how can we approach this in a way that's safe for them? Yeah. Um, I'm only laughing yeah, because my like, son does that. He does the too many in his mouth at once. Yes. So does Leo. I'm like, whoa, do you want to chew that, buddy? <laughs> um, but I think there's little opportunities to explore it on their own. And, mm. and then, like you said, just those conversations afterwards, like it does feel good. And we have these inbuilt, hardwired reward systems when we eat mm. lollies or sugar um, because our body needs you know, our brain's primary fuel source is glucose. So uh, we have these hardwired inbuilt reward systems when we eat like food that contains glucose or can be broken down into glucose, our body goes, I want this, this is my preferred Mm -hmm. fuel source, give me more. So I think it's just really important talking about that. I talk to my kids often Mm -hmm. about, um, you know, what does your brain need for fuel? It needs sugar. So how do we get our sugar? Well, we can get it from so many different foods. We can get it from bread. We can get it from our cereal. Mm. We can get it from our fruit. Um, so yeah, sometimes as the as the ages as they grow, um, the different conversations can come up. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think how you are doing it is just the most beautiful way to talk about it. Um, just allowing them in the moment and Ooh. having those reflections <laughs> afterwards. I think it's yeah, it's yeah yeah well yeah I don't even know where it came from for all I know it probably came from your page and then I was like yeah but it's also because I've I've just tried it and seen that it works because it's even to do with um addressing um like eating dinner because for us it was like the whole um finish everything on your plate kind of thing so I'm mindful Mm -hmm. to not do that with my kids and then keep myself in check so then that's also been a good way like just listen to your belly 
that has applied yeah. to that as well. And so they can tell me like my belly's telling me I'm full and I'm like, okay. Yes. And so I think that's, a, it's just been really important for us and our family and keeping myself in check and making sure that I'm preparing them in ways that I wasn't prepared as well. Um, I'm yeah. aware of the time that we have. We've got a couple of questions in the comments. Um, yeah, so yeah. I'll just, um, um, cause I'm just mindful. Roz will come to the comments and answer your questions but as we're ending now is there did you have any final tips or information that you wanted to share with us that we didn't already cover just, okay I think just compassion and judgment and like judgment free and compassion I think the more we can practice this the more beneficial it is for everyone mm. um I think just being really mindful if feelings come up for us like are we you know, if we see something that comes up that doesn't fit in with our value or our belief around how we should eat, um, where does that come from? Mm. Um, you know, are we judging someone based on what they have because of our own internal beliefs? And can we challenge that? Um, yeah, yeah, I think the answer is likely like, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> just to let you know. Um, <laughs> yeah, because it's such a huge mm. topic. There are so many ways to eat um and it's going to look different for everybody and I think we just need to be so aware of that that yeah. everybody is different um yeah and it's all a big journey it's all a it big is. learning experience and you know even as you go through it like I said I you know as a parent I have new experiences that come up for me all the time starting a child starting school in the lunch boxes mm. um oh you know, I, I, I was gonna like, make a comment Whoa. before about how school sends home notes now too which is a whole other rant yeah. to have because I yeah you were talking about the comparing lunches thing so mm -hmm. that is so complicated but which also or just a child coming home and yeah. going um you know like I don't want this food because so and so is having this food and the different exposures mm -hmm. or um you know my son had a I think I've spoken about this a few times but a big one when he first started school was kids were saying yuck yuck why have you got mm -hmm. them in so now he will not yeah. eat vegetables at school and we've just had to go you know what like it's okay like I'm still gonna mm -hmm. put in the couple you don't have to eat them at school um you know according to him no one else brings vegetables to school other than like two kids so it's yeah, just these uh, things that come up that you don't expect um and I think it's just being okay to process them mm -hmm. and go wow like yeah. I wasn't expecting this this is really challenging let's move through it yeah yeah thank you for bringing that up because that's an important point like we can't we can't control it all we can do is support our kids through it so Absolutely. Chrissy can you tell Absolutely. everyone where to find more of you yeah sure so anything kid related and um, mealtime related is over on her nourished kids so definitely heavy on Instagram and also I have a website um, but if you want to chat to me and I'm here day to day it is her dot nourished and that's just um where I share a lot of the content, um, yeah, on all sorts on all sorts of topics, including motherhood. So. Yeah, perfect. Thank you so much for taking the yeah. time to talk with us Thank and for being so, so vulnerable much. and honest. It's been really a wonderful discussion. I can see that there's a lot of uh, comments for us to go and check in with everyone oh, after our I'll chat. Definitely going afterwards. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you Thanks so, so much, much for your time, Chrissy. and thank you everyone as well. Yeah. Thank you.